The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, it looks like a lot of people are starting to come in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. I don't, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I would like to leave a good amount of time at the end for questions and answers. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get started now. So my name is Nicole, for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm the Education and Training Coordinator for the Florida Literacy Coalition. And I just want to apologize if anyone was trying to email me within the last couple of days. My email has been acting crazy, um, and we're trying to get that sorted out. Um, so I know some of you I gave my personal email address to, but uh, you should be able to email me on my regular email now. All right, so just a quick um, introduction of FLC. Um, in 1985, FLC was established. We promote and support and advocate for the effective delivery of quality adult and family literacy services in the state of Florida. In addition to being the host of Florida, Florida's Adult and Family Resource Center, we provide professional development, training, technical assistance, resource sharing, networking, communication, and also a hotline for tutors and students. Um, I'd like to thank California Library Literacy Services for helping uh, support us in the online course development. And I'd also like to thank Carla. And I'm going to give it over to Carla for just a second so she can say a couple words. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to say thanks again for participating in this pilot. You're really paving the way for um, hopefully other libraries to be able to have access to this uh, this program, so thanks so much for being willing to do this. Just a reminder that I'm hoping you'll start as soon as you can after the new year getting people um, registered and start trying the training so that when my replacement comes to you and asks you if you think uh, we should continue this for the new year starting in July, um, you'll have information to share with them. So uh, again, I just want to give you my thanks and I'm looking forward to seeing this as much as you are. So go ahead, Nicole. All right, great. Thank you, Carla. Okay, so before I start, I'm going to quickly go over the uh, go to webinar controls. I know a lot of you have heard this already, but uh, for those of you who were, who were maybe not at the last session, I'll go over it really briefly. The red button in the on your control panel on the top left corner, it's a little separate panel, uh, that'll dock your control panel. It'll move it all the way to the right. If you press that red button again, it'll bring it back out. Below that, you'll see a hand raise icon. If prompted during the webinar to raise your hand, you just press that icon and I'll see a show of hands. On the actual uh, panel, you'll see a questions box. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, go ahead and type the questions into that question box. Um, I think that's going to be it for our controls today, so let me go ahead and get started. Okay, so our agenda for today is we're going to go over what a facilitator does. Uh, then we're going to look at the back door of the course, which is basically what uh, giving you guys the option to uh, have a little bit more uh, control of the course. Um, I know a lot of you have already gone into it already, and you'll notice that your controls are limited right now. But um, I will physically, I will go into the system and allow you all of you to have the control within your courses. Uh, then I'll go over some reporting options. Uh, then we'll talk about the common technical support questions and how to answer them, and then we'll open it up to Q and A. Okay, so what does a facilitator do? The first thing is discuss. It's pretty important to have discussion um, as a part of the course. Not only does it allow participants to talk to one another and make it give it a classroom style uh, feel, but it also allows you as a facilitator to uh, track the progress of your uh, of your participants to make sure that they're understanding the material and uh, you know grasping it and you can usually tell that by the discussion posts. The next one is helping with assignments. Specifically, this one would be for the lesson plan assignment at the end. So um, 
a lot of times we have some tutors who are not necessarily um, experienced with education. They're not used to doing lesson plans. I'm not sure if it's the same way um, for your programs, but we will have, uh, we usually do have people who are a little bit apprehensive about creating a lesson plan. So this is really where um, the facilitator comes in um, to help uh, guide them a little bit in the way of, uh, you know, how to how to structure the lesson plan a little bit. It, and it's it kind of just to uh, put their fears to rest. Um, a lot of times they're just nervous about writing the lesson plan. And, and honestly, sometimes they just won't submit it because of that, that fear. So that's something you definitely want to avoid as a facilitator. And also you, tr you can track their progress. So you track their progress through different means, which I'll show you later on, um, through discussions, through the reporting features. And uh, this will help you understand which tutor may be ready to move on to the next portion of your training. But really, this is flexible. This is your, this is going to be your course. So what, what we do is not necessarily something that'll work for your program. So this is a tool for you guys to use and just feel free to use it in any way that you see fit. If you think, if your tutors are, are better at taking something and running with it, then I mean, by all means, let them do that and be a little more hands off. If you need to do a little more hand-holding, that's completely up to you. So let's go over some best practices that we've found. So the first one that we have found um, that really helps the tutors is to communicate often through email and through the course forums. So the course forums, you can have a set, if you'd like to create a separate uh, discussion for just uh, maybe some help or, or something like that, that's fine. Um, you can do that within your own course. Um, but we do ask that uh, usually our facilitators will have an email address so that they can uh, communicate that way. The reason we do that is because within Moodle, you don't necessarily see it. Um, you can only see it if you go in and look for it. If you're communicating th with them through email, you'll be able to get it you know, within a good amount of time and then you'll be able to answer them pretty quickly. So, so now you also want to meet with the tutors in person. We talk a lot about blended learning in the last one, and um, I just want to emphasize that again, that meeting with tutors in person um, helps establish the credibility of the course. So uh, otherwise, how, how you're going to meet is completely up to you. Um, whether it's an orientation in the beginning or maybe even um, a webinar type format, which I'll also discuss a little bit later on. And, um, but you should feel free to be creative with this. We haven't tried everything. So if you have any different ideas, you know, we haven't really seen it incorporated within a classroom. We haven't seen this tool used at the same time as a face-to-face -face meeting. So just feel free to do whatever is right for your program. And, uh, and also let us know if it's something, uh, something you think is unique. Make someone the point person for tech support. This is kind of more imperative for larger programs than smaller. If you're a small program and you're going to have maybe, you know, 10 tutors, 10 course participants, it's you're probably not going to need someone separate. But if you have a larger program and you're going to be doing the facilitating, sometimes it's going to be difficult to, to also field the tech support questions. So what we did at FLC is we created a separate email address for tech support. It's onlinecourseadmin at floridaliteracy.org. So we use that and I field those tech questions along with uh, another administrator in uh, in the office. So that usually makes it a little bit easier. And the last one is just um, explore the course. So once you have your course established, I highly recommend going in and seeing what kind of options you have, what you can do in the course, 
um, maybe create a second account if you have the time as a student or as a course participant and see what they see. This is the way that I've learned most of the stuff on this course. Um, we, have, uh, we have a tech person who's helped a lot, um, but really exploring the course gets you a lot more acquainted with it. Now I'm going to stop real quick because we have some questions. Let's see. OK. All right, these are, these are more private answer type of questions, so I'll go ahead and move on. OK, now we are going to go ahead and show you, I'm going to go ahead and show you the course in the facilitator format. So let's go ahead and move on there. All right, you should be seeing this front screen. This should be pretty familiar to you guys now because I know a lot of you have been going in. So this is going to this is a welcome page as you know. I'm now signed in as a teacher, which is going to be your role. So when you're sign when you're a teacher, you're going to be able to go into your course. So we're starting with California Library Literacy Services course. Okay. So you have a lot of administrative options over here on the left-hand side. So first we're going to start with the discussions and lesson plans. So as you can see, we have some discussion modules right here. As a facilitator, you're just going to go into these, and we already have a discussion posted here. But as a facilitator, you're going to click and add a new discussion topic, and you're going to want to be the first one to post just to get everything going. So you just put in your subject in this line, you put in your message, you can add attachments if you'd like, and then post it to the forum. This usually gets the discussion going and people don't feel uh, as apprehensive if somebody's already um, posted. Okay, so let's look a little bit at the lesson plan section. So let me show you a little how I did that. So lesson plan is at the bottom of your outline right here. You click on lesson plan. And this is what you are going to see as a teacher. So you're going to see this little thing here. That's just the summary. And then the grading summary. How many participants you have, who is submitted, who needs grading, and then the due date. You can add a due date to it. We don't normally do that. We just kind of, it's an end of course type of assignment, but you're more than welcome to add that. And when you want to see them, you're going to click view grade all option, all submissions. I'm sorry. Okay, and that's so you see everyone's um, here on the list and then their submissions. Okay. So that's how you're going to see that. And if you want to edit the lesson plan, you're going to go to this button right here that says edit. You're going to click that, and you're going to edit settings. Now what this is going to do is it's just going to allow you to, um, to add a due date. Um, there's different submission types, file submission. If you want them to do it by text, you could do that instead. Um, you can disable all due dates if you don't want to do a due date. Okay, so let's navigate back. All right, I'm going to stop for a second to see if we have any questions. Hold on. Okay, we have a, a quick question from Kelly Tyler. Um, can you make slides from both webinars available so we can refer back to it if we need to uh, about the implementation. Yes, I'll make both uh, I'll, I'll make them both handouts and I'll send them together um, in an email. Um, I'm going to do a sort of facilitator packet where I'll have all this information in there for you along with the videos. So you'll get the handouts and the two videos 
and uh, just some other information in that email after this. Okay, so we're going to move on to the sidebar items over here. There's a lot of items here, but there are only a couple that you really need to know about. Um, there's switch role. So you can switch your role to a non-editing teacher, volunteer, or guest. I'll show you a little bit about the non-editing teacher in a minute. And guest, I mean, the courses don't allow guests in, so that is, um, you don't need to worry about that one. Okay, so here's your course. In, so on your course administration, you're going to have your settings. Your settings, you can um, add your picture or add the logo. You can, um, you can add a quick summary if you'd like underneath the logo. So any summary that you save, sorry, it's taking a little bit, should show up. Oh, no. Hold on. Okay, it's going to show up on the front page. So any summary you put in will show up on the first page. Here's a little hello. You can also put it on the, uh, the left-hand side if you'd wish. All right. So next is the users. Here you have a couple of options. You have enrolled users enrollment methods, groups and permissions, and other users you're not going to be doing anything with, so don't worry about those too much. Uh, you're going to focus here on enrolled users and enrollment methods. So go into enrolled users, and you'll see your entire list of users. Okay? So here in the enrolled users, you have a couple of options. So I'm going to go to... I'm going to choose one person, so I'm going to choose Carla. Carla, I want to assign her a role to non-editing teacher. So to do that, I'm going to click this little icon right here. Let me highlight it because it's kind of small. Ooh, oh, <laughs> it just covered the whole thing. But that's the, uh, this little icon right here is going to be the one that you want to press. Okay, so when you click that, you have a small box that comes out and it gives you a couple of options. You can either change her to, this says volunteer, that's what we use for our course, but we'll change that to probably participant for, for you guys. So we're going to go ahead and click on non-editing teacher. Okay, so now Carla has the role of volunteer and non-editing teacher. So a non-editing teacher is able to go in, view lesson plans and assignments as well. What they can do is they can't change any of the um, they can't change the description, they can't edit anything on the course. But they can go in and they can uh, view discussions, they can view the assignments, and they can help grade. So if you have someone who you would like to be a non-editing teacher. Uh, besides your main course facilitator, um, you can go ahead and, and do it that way. All right. Okay, so uh, Cheryl Weiss has asked, what is the size limitation for the attachments? The size limitation is 100 megabytes, so um, nothing too big could go in there, but it's... I mean, if you're just um, uploading a couple of documents or a PDF, you shouldn't have any issues. But anything larger than that, uh, you're really not going to be able to upload into Moodle. Okay, and the next 
Will, will you be explaining how to enroll participants? Yes, I will be doing that next, actually. So to enroll a user, you can go down here and click Enroll Users, and you can search for users in the system, and it will enroll them. However, you can only enroll people who are already in the system. So they have to already create an account and be able to log in with their, with their username and password. Let me go over enrollment methods real quick. So the enroll, main enrollment method is going to be the uh, uh, self-enrollment, the volunteer. So here you're going to want, I, I took off the enrollment key temporarily, but I'll show you how to add an enrollment key. So when you click on self-enrollment, you're going to put in whatever key that you want. I'll put in CS, oh, so you can click this little box here to show you what you're typing, just to make sure that you're getting it in right. So CLLS2015. And then you can unmask it to hide it again. But that's your enrollment key. And you hit Save Changes. And then that's your enrollment method. If you don't want to have an enrollment key on yours, go into Settings and you just delete the enrollment key and save the changes. Okay. So next we're gonna go to reports, which is the next important thing on here. Let's look at logs first. Okay, so here are your logs. This gives you a couple of options here. So you'll see you have uh, about six uh, boxes that you can open up and scroll down in. So as a teacher, you'll only have access to the California Library Literacy Services or your particular course. And uh, let's say you want just one to see the logs of one participant. We'll choose me. And we'll choose for all days and all activities. Okay, so then after you do that, hit get these logs. And it'll bring up all the logs of every time I did something into the in the course. So you see we have role assigned, we have course viewed, course module viewed, course viewed. So it looks like I've been pretty active in this course, but you may need to to really go in and see uh, what each person is doing. You can also do this with all participants. And it'll give you a log for everyone who's been um, who, everyone who's been logging in. Oh, there's a long list. Okay, so here at the end, you'll see the, a button that says download. So you're going to want to hit this download button. And it'll allow you to save it as an Excel file. So just click this to change how you want to save it. I'll just click Excel spreadsheet, download. My computer is being very non-responsive today for some reason. OK, there it goes. So you're just going to download it and save it as a file, and then you'll have that as a spreadsheet. OK, so let's go to Live Logs. The Live Logs is pretty simple. You just go in and see a, a, a quick look at who's in the course um, and what they did and when they, when they did it. So the last, last thing that happened was the log report was viewed by me, Nicole Caban at 2.24. OK, so that one's pretty simple. Let me see if we have any questions. Oh, <laughs> Valerie Hardy has pointed out that the enrollment is missing an L. 
yes, this is not something that we can actually change. This Moodle is actually an Australian uh, website, and apparently that's how they spell enroll. So uh, we can't change that because that's just built into the Moodle uh, website, unfortunately. So if anyone asks about that, just let them know. Okay. Yes, and uh, I did change one of the enrollments to make it correct, and then I, I realized that the other one wasn't correct. So um, I will probably go in and change that just for consistency's sake and make them all 1L, but it is a little annoying. I understand that. Okay, so now we're going to go to the activity report. The activity report is also another quick look. Um, you can see each activity and who's viewed it. So I've had six lesson plan views, and each of these modules had a certain amount of views, and the course had 113 views. It's just a quick look if you want to see how your course is doing. And then there's course participation, which is similar to the logs. So you'll choose it by, um, by activity. So I'll choose online tutor training course, shown by teacher. OK, so since I only showed it um, by teacher, you'll only see one, and it's, it's me. If you go up here and choose volunteer and hit go, you'll see all of the participants and how many actions they took. It's another quick look. All right, so now the most important thing here with the reports, under, root, under users, you're going to want to go back to your enrolled users. And here they all are. We're going to click, uh, click My Profile. OK, so this is going to be your user profile. You can see, as a teacher, you can see their entire profile. So um, right here, you have their full profile, any notes, any of their forum posts or discussions. Um, underneath that, you'll see reports. So you can see each individual's reports. And there are a lot of reporting options here as well. You can go to today's logs. And this is a nice handy chart of uh, what, when they were on at what time. And you have that right below over here. This just shows you just in the day how many times this person has been on on this particular day. So I'll go back to the profile. Come on. OK. And then you want to look at all logs. All logs is any, uh, any amount of time that this person has ever been on the course. So here you see what activity they did, at what time, and um, so you can see, get a good look of who's been on and how long, how long they've been taking the course and if they've been actually active in the course. Let's stop for a second. Okay. Okay, no questions yet. I know this is a little bit... Um, complicated, so uh, I'm going to try to answer questions as I go through instead of just stopping at one point. All right, so that's pretty much it for reports. So if there are any questions about your reporting options, please um, type them into the questions box and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, now we're going to go into a little bit about the tech support questions that you might uh, receive. So the first question that, uh, the most common question that you're going to get is, where is my confirmation email? So this, this site, as you know, sends you a confirmation email. And you click the confirmation link, and it should enroll you, in, it should, um, enroll you into the site, not the course, but the site. So as a facilitator, um, you will have to sometimes field questions like that. The, your first thing to do is just to uh, check the spam folder. So um, they're, they're going to need to just 
check that real quick and if it's not in there, you can try enrolling them manually. Um, for the manual enrollment, however, I would say we'll just, um, just email us to do that just because it's a, uh, it's, I, I don't know if you'll have the ability to, um, to get them into the actual site. So just if they're having a lot of trouble with getting onto the actual site, just let us know and, and we'll, um, we'll troubleshoot that for them. All right, the next one is, why can't I view my course? So if they're having trouble viewing their course, what you're going to want to do is ask them to um, change their browser. So a lot of people use Internet Explorer um, and may not see some of the course or they, it's acting kind of weird there. That's, Internet Explorer isn't the best place to see the course or to take the course, I would definitely recommend Google Chrome and maybe uh, Mozilla Firefox. Uh, Google Chrome works the best though. So ask them to change their browser and if something's still not working, again, you, you push that question up to us. So they may ask if why their enrollment key isn't working. So if someone asks, is trying to get into your course and they can't seem to get the enrollment key to work, simply go back to users, go to enrollment methods, and self-enrollment, like we did last time. Here you're going to want to unmask it. Just make sure that you have the correct enrollment key here. And um, you may need to change it. So once you change it and they still can't enroll, then um, you can push that question up to us and we will try and fix that. Okay, so those are the most common tech support questions that I get. Um, I don't really see anything much worse than that. If there's anything that's impossible for you to deal with, you know, just um, pass that up to us. But we do ask that you're, you use a different email address. The email address is going to be um, onlinecourseadmin at floridaliteracy.org, and I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Okay, so you should all have that email address. All right, so let me go ahead and take a couple of questions. Okay, so Wendy Balstone had a question, but I don't see the question here. Okay. It is not necessary. Um, Cheryl Weiss has a question. Is it necessary to disable pop-up blockers to use the course? It's not necessary. Um, the actual course is embedded into this website, so it shouldn't actually be a problem. Um, however, if you do want it, uh, if you do want the course to be a pop-up format, just let me know. Um, the advantage, I guess, to that would be it would be a little bit bigger, but then they would have definitely have to have the pop-up uh, pop blockers um, disabled. Okay. Okay, Vidya is saying that she enrolled in the program and doesn't have a confirmation email. Um, definitely check your spam folder. Sometimes it takes a little while. If you just did it uh, two minutes ago, it, it may not come through to you right away. But um, if you once you create your account, it should come through. And if not, again, just email me, and I will, uh, and I'll manually confirm you into the site. Um, let's see. Okay, how much time? Do, Kelly Tyler is asking, how much time um, on a weekly basis do I spend in course administration? I actually have these hours logged, but um, I would say I do about 
a, a probably six to eight hours a week on um, course administration. When you start, when you actually start a course, it's going to um, it's going to take up a little more of your time because people are just getting into the course. They're going to be sending you some some questions about confirmation emails and all that, and you may have to email tech support. Starting up the course is really what takes the most time. Uh, once you get into the course, it should be fine. Just kind of main, uh, maintaining after you you know post your discussion posts. You're just watching um, your course participants and all that. Okay. Okay. Kelly Tyler also asked, after the cohort completes their work, can they revisit the forums after they've uh, matched to the match to review course material? Does each new co cohort re reset the for forums? you're actually going to have to manually reset um, reset the forums. So um, unless you want to keep those discussions, that's up to you. So if you'd like to take the discussions out, then um, by all means do. Um, you'll have to delete them. Um, we do. So for every uh, facilitated course we do, we take out the old discussions and start new forums. And you can, um, Sheila Rodriguez is asking, what is the duration of the course and is it something that we can customize? Unfortunately, the duration of the course is set. Um, you can customize it only by um, cutting back a little bit on the discussions, um, but it's the course is already kind of built to be nine, uh, roughly nine hours. All right, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on and take some more questions at the end. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start the discussion after um, after this webinar. We are going to continue it. So we're going to start the discussion with a, a forum. Um, how will you use this course in a blended learning format, and or how will you incorporate? A face-to-face -face component. So I'm going to start that discussion in the actual uh, discussion forum on your uh, on the um, course listing screen. So you'll go to the California Library Literacy Services discussion forum, and we're just going to um, discuss that. So your homework, of course, is going to be the blended learning forum like I just discussed. Um, and also, I need everyone to send me their logs, summaries of their courses, and their facilitator names. So, um, so via email, you just send us your logo, a description of your program, and the names of the people who are going to be facilitating this course in the beginning, and I can get that set up for you. All right, so with that, we will move on to questions. And I know you guys have a lot of questions, so we'll spend a good amount of time on that. Okay. Okay, so Kelly Tyler is asking, do you have any statistics about dropout rates for potential tutors? Locally, I'm expecting a big, um, a big concern to be the nine hours required to complete the training. The training is pretty extensive, um, so... We don't have anything, um, we don't have any real statis solid statistics, but I can tell you um, that usually for us, when we sign up about 30, we sign up about 30 people and uh, 15 will create their accounts and then 10 or so will, will follow through. The follow through definitely depends on how involved the facilitator is. Um, usually more people will drop out if they have, if they don't have um, someone guiding them along the way. Okay, Judy Kilkin is asking, how many tutors generate six to eight hours of admin assistance? 
Um, I'm not sure that's that's from program to program since we have um, staff members here that do it. Um, I would say probably a lot of places have about one tutor and that tutor will do it, but um, it, it is a lot to ask of, of a volunteer tutor. So um, maybe if you get a couple of tutors, it would, um, it would work out better. Okay, Cheryl Weiss is asking, are the forum discussions unique to a facilitator? The forum discussions are gonna be um, unique to each course. So each group of facilitators is going to have um, a discussion forum. So it's uh, so if you're going to be splitting up the work with the discussion forums, um, I would suggest taking one uh, one facilitator taking um, module three and another facilitator taking module four kind uh, kind of thing. Okay, so Alan Archer is asking, is it possible to skip using the admin and just use the course materials? Um, if you'd like to use the course materials in a different setting, that is fine by us if you don't want to use um, the actual course. Unfortunately, the, whole, the course as a whole is designed to be facilitated. It's, it's pretty tough for a tutor to take the course without having... Um, without having someone there to help them. Okay, Robin Raphael asked, how do you know when the nine, when the person is finished with the nine hour course? So within the course you'll have, and the activity logs, you're gonna have an activity log that will show the percentage of completion and it'll show whether or not somebody completed so let me see if I can pull that up real quick and find it. All right, so let's see. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure how to get that. Um, however, I did send it to one of our people earlier this week. So let me um, just find the actual, um, I'll just find the, the sheet that I sent to her and show you what it looks like. And then I'll let you know later through email how to, how to generate it. Hold on one second, let's see. Okay. So once you generate the report, um, and I will, uh, um, I'll definitely get back to you via email on how to do that you'll see something like uh, there's going to be something like this, and it's also going to have lesson plan on the end here, but I took it out for her purposes. Um, so here you have each, uh, the name of each of your participants and whether or not they completed the actual main course, and then, oh, and then it'll show whether or not they have completed the uh, lesson plan. So um, if your course depends on whether or not if your course completion depends on whether or not they um, completed the lesson plan, then you're definitely going to want that for sure. So I will email you, I'll email you all that information later. All right, let's check.
Okay, so you guys didn't see the actual um, spreadsheet, I guess. Hold on. Let me see if I could pull it up again. Okay, are you guys seeing the spreadsheet now? Are you able to see it? Okay. All right. So, so like I said earlier, um, you'll be able to um, see the completed uh, who completed the actual course itself, and then who completed the lesson plan, because we have it set up where they they complete the course once they complete the lesson plan. So. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right, so let's see if more questions. Okay. All right, so Alan, um, Okay, maybe I think I misunderstood your question. Um, okay, I see what you're saying. So Alan Archer is um, asking if there is a way to um, to minimize maybe the uh, the admin position, just the record keep the record keeping admin that consumes a sizable amount of time. Um, it really, this course really does kind of, um, it, it kind of calls for an admin who's going to be able to, um, to give a little bit of time to this. So, um, there are, some programs have done it so that they're a little bit um, more hands off. And um, and the tutors have kind of gone in their own way, or we can you can do co uh, cohorts where the tutors will interact with each other, and that could take off some time from from the actual person who has to uh, be the administrator for the course. Okay, let's see what I'm gonna continue asking answering some questions because we got quite a few here. Let's see. Okay, so Valerie Hardy asked um, what legacy course files are. Those are just um, those are just for uh, our purposes. Those are um, files that. Um, we've used in the past, but since this course is new, those aren't really any, that's not anything we uh, need to worry about right now. Okay. All right, Cheryl Weiss asked, could there be some kind of notification to the facilitator when a volunteer is completed? I don't think that's actually a possibility. That's something that you have to actually go into the course and look for. Um, the one drawback of one of the drawbacks of Moodle is is the fact that it doesn't really give you an alert system. It's it's just something you have to look for. Okay, let's look at some more questions. So Sheila Rodriguez um, asked. So this course is mainly asynchronous. Not everyone needs to be logged in together and going through the course modules, but a cohort should complete the course at the same amount of time. Yes, um, that's true. Not everyone needs to be on this course at the same time. Um, we do suggest that small groups, small or large groups, get together and do it together just to give it more of a classroom feel. Um, we find that that's, that's the most effective way of, of doing this course. Okay, so okay, so Jeanette Gamble wanted to bring the numbering errors in the blue outline area on the training page where the modules are listed. I'll take a look at that after the webinar and, and see if I can take care of any any of those issues. 
Okay, Kelly Tyler asked, in the future, would we be able to have more than one course being facilitated at once? A program of our size may be able to accommodate, um, accommodate and need online course start dates twice a month, for example. That's an interesting question. We have actually never done that before. Um, it would be kind of tough seeing as the, the discussions are all together. Um, you could conceivably do um, discussion A and discussion B um, and have people in the first group go on the first discussion, people in the second group go on the second discussion. But really, the course is pretty flexible. The course itself is pretty flexible. Anyone could go in at any time and take it. So it's it's possible. It's definitely possible for for you to do two at a time. It just kind of would require a little bit of a workaround. Okay. So Wendy Balstone asked, "Do you have structured time uh, times days to have them work on lessons, or are we 24/7 available to help them via email?" I would not suggest being available 24/7. Um, uh, what some of our facilitators do is give them kind of an office hours type thing where you can uh, where they can reach you so maybe if you can um, check the email from nine to five um, you tell them you can reach me from nine to five um, we don't stru it's not um, structured in a very strict way for our courses um, they can go on and do their lessons at any time um, but just remember you know there are boundaries when it comes to um, them emailing you. You don't want to get anything at midnight. Um, Valerie Hardy, um, with a, she's asking what email to um, send me the uh, homework items. That you can just do through my my email. The online course um, admin at floridaliteracy.org email is probably just going to be for the technical support. So when you guys are started into the course, um, that's the email you're going to want to use. But for now, for those things, just email me directly. OK, let's see. OK, so um, I want to let you guys know that the, the nine hours is just the course average. Um, some people will take more time, some will take less. Um, so the, uh, the nine hours is kind of um, calculated through the, um, the course itself. So the pacing of the course, the pacing of the audio, and um, a, a couple of 15 minutes per discussion, uh, 30 minutes for the lesson plan kind of thing it roughly comes out to nine hours. Some people may take a lot less time on the lesson plan, especially if they're more experienced with it. So if they have, if they're experienced with the lesson plan, they may not take that long. Maybe they get the discussion and so they'll do that pretty quickly. Uh, others will take a little bit longer. So you do want to give them a, a decent amount of time. So like a, a three to four week window. Um, for for the roughly nine hours. Okay, so how would you prefer that um, new staff get trained as facilitators? This is was asked by Joanna M. Um, so that's again that's something up to you guys. Um, you will have a, you'll have the ability to decide whether or not you want to train them. Um, by showing them the video, or if you want to do it in person, that's fine too. Um, I suggest you uh, you show you let them see the YouTube video um, of this webinar, and then give them a little bit of an overview. But we we don't have any strict training methods. Okay. Let's see what else we have. I think we have a couple more questions. Okay, so Alan Archer is asking, do you have tutor trainees use the tutor training manual or is everything contained within the online program? We have, um, we have a student orientation manual, which you will all be getting. Um, that's for the old one, so it just needs to be updated a little bit and then I'll send it out. Um, 
there's also a facilitator manual. So there's two separate manuals. So if you have uh, if you just have some students or tutors that are taking the course, um, you'll send them you'll send them the, just a student orientation, which is just a couple of pages. Um, of course, you don't have to use our student orientation. Um, you can create your own if you'd like. Um, you can use ours as the template and change it. That's all up to you. Same thing with the facilitator um, packet. So if you have someone who's interested in being a facilitator and you want to train them, you can give them the facilitator packet. Okay, let's see. Okay, so Cheryl Weiss is asking um, if when we see the uh, quiz being implemented. Uh, we're going to do a second. Um, this course should be completed with the quiz by um, early next year. The holidays are kind of mucking everything up a little bit, but, um, but we're going to get working on that quiz as soon as possible. Okay, so we're actually, Robin's asking um, if we're going to have um, materials in the modules uh, to help with lesson planning. We have one blog in the module so far, but we do plan on expanding the lesson planning um, portion a little bit just because tutors seem to have the most apprehension about that part. Um, so we're going to, um, we're going to include the um, we're going to include that also in within the modules for the next round. Okay, so um, Jeanette Gamble also asked, uh, I don't understand about creating a lesson plan. Are trainees supposed to select a learner profile? Yes, so what the uh, tutors are going to do at the end of the course is they're going to have three learner profiles. They're going to choose a learner profile, and then they're going to write a lesson plan based on the strengths, weaknesses, uh, and goals of that learner. And then they submit the lesson plan into the assignment. Okay. Um, David Lewis is asking, can you give an example of how to blend the face-to-face -face trainings with the online course? When I, when I say blend, I don't necessarily mean it has to like happen at the same time. So one example is um, some of our organizations like to do an in-person orientation uh, before they put them towards the online course. So they'll explain a little bit about the program. Um, they'll talk uh, more to their specifics of the program. And then they'll give them the opportunity to take the online course on their own time, at the same time facilitating it via email, phone, um, and discussion posts. So that's one example, but of course, um, that's you're you're not you don't have to do that. You can do whatever makes you comfortable with the program. Okay, so um, real quickly before um, before we go, we don't have any more questions right now, but I'll give you guys a chance to ask some more questions. Um, I do want to show you. Um, last time we talked a little bit about the possibility of having. Um, a web conferencing um, portion of this. So I will show you that now. And it's not set up just yet, but I'll kind of show you how it works. So on your list, under California Library Literacy Services, this is where your course is going to be um, in, with your logo. And under here, you're going to have the discussion forum and the web conferencing. So can you see, you can see it says teachers only. Um, so when you it's not set up quite yet, but when you click web conferencing, you're going to be taken to a, a survey. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a sign in sheet. So you're going to sign in with the time and day that you want to do a web conference. Um, this is this is just going to be a little added feature. Um, if you decide that you want to do maybe a lecture or if you want to do a screencast. Um, then you can do that uh, with uh, Join Me, which is a, a screen sharing software. It's really easy to use, so once you sign up for it, um, we at FLC will send you a link to, uh, to the program. You click the link, and um, 
you should and you just have to download it onto your computer and then you can use a unique link to um, to have your web conference at a specific time and day. Okay, so let me see if we have any more questions. Yes, and you can also you can do a video meeting that way as well. Okay, so doesn't look like we have any more questions. I know this is kind of a lot to take in right now, um, and I'll be here to help. So you can you can email me your questions um, if you didn't think of any, or if you didn't get a chance to ask, or if you think of something later, feel free to email me, of course, at ncaban at floridaliteracy.org. But I will give you another minute just to see if we can if we get any other questions in. So if you have any apprehensions or, or anything like that, feel free to email me and I'll help in any way I can. Okay, so looks like, okay, I'll just go through the questions one more time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. All right, I think that's I think that's about it, and we're at about an hour, so I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, I just want to um, I just want to let you guys know one more time um, that we have uh, a little bit of an assignment. So um, so with that assignment, you just um, start posting on that discussion forum. I'll I'll post first um, just to get just to get it kind of started. And um, also, don't forget to send me your logos, your summaries, and your facilitator names so I can enter them into the system. So once we do that, it might take uh, a little while since I'm the only one doing it. Um, so there will be a, a little bit. You just have to give me about a week before everyone's entered in. So um, and everyone will uh, have teacher access. All the facilitators that you send me will have teacher access. Um, so I think that's, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to, oh, hold on. Let's see. Okay, um, Wendy, you asked how uh, to sign up and take the course right now. Uh, that I did send out an email a while ago um, for the actual enrollment key. If you, um, and the enrollment key is CLLS2015, and CLLS is all caps. So um, if you go ahead and enter that in the California Library Literacy Services, you can uh, you can take the course that way. But like I said, I will be creating um, courses for your programs. So you can um, you can e once you email me your information, I'll be able to start that up soon. Okay, Cheryl Weiss is asking uh, when will a copy of these webinars be available? and the facilitator uh, tutor handbook. The webinar is gonna be available immediately. I'm going to um, upload this one to YouTube, like I upload the last one to YouTube, um, right, after, uh, right after the webinar, so it'll be ready immediately. The handbook may take a little bit longer because I do have to update the old one um, because it doesn't have some of the, it doesn't have the same pictures. I just have to, to change some things. And then I'll hand that out to all of you guys as well. All right. Okay, so we don't have any other questions. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it off there for today. So again, um, email me, ncaban at floridaliteracy.org if you have any questions at all. I'm going um, to email you guys all this information. Again, you're going to have the handouts for the webinar and the webinar links uh, immediately. That stuff will be ready for you. Um, the handbooks are gonna take a little longer again. Um, so I will also show you how to pull up um, the report where you can see whether or not they completed. So I'll send that to everyone, not just the one person who asked. So you can see the report on where they completed the course and where they had completed the lesson plan for the course. 
All right. So with that, I'm going to go. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thanks again to California Library Literacy Services for helping support us on the development of this course. And everyone have a great holiday. Thank you. Bye.